Welcome friends, I am Tanmoy and welcome you all in my channel Chemistry and History of Molecules. So this is a continuation, reaction, continuation lecture of Reform Arts Theory Action. Previously I have uploaded few videos about basic concept of Reform Arts Theory Action and this uh, app, examples of Reform Arts Theory Action. So this is another example of this organo zinc compound. Okay, and that is Blaise reaction. This reaction what it does produces 1,3 dicarbonyl compound. So a lot of chemistry to be learn in this video so let's start so first of all we will discuss about the basic pathway the second mechanism and third is example first of all mechanism so here as i told it produces organo zinc reagent what happens in this zinc react with this alpha halo ester what we have taught previously also it produces this carbon zinc bond means Zinc is incorporated into the organometallic reagent. So this is zinc, this is CO2 ET, and right now this is Br. For your little remember, I want to say previously this was delta positive because of halide, because of this halide and CO2 ET, and right now this carbon is delta negative. So previously it was electrophilic, and right now this is nucleophilic. So it is expected that it will react with any reagent having electrophilic property as cyanide is that proper choice. What happens here? This carbon is delta positive and because of the attachment with delta negative nitrogen with a triple bond. And this carbon is prone to attack with very easily because bulkness is not that much present like ketone because this is a triple bond. So bulkness is also less. Consequently, what happens? This reagent first attacks here and produces a R C double bond N minus and here this is this is the CH2 so this is CO2 ET and zinc now will shift from here to here okay zinc bromide another thing is that it is true that due to mm, counterbalance the negative charge of this uh, Nitrogen zinc will go there. Second, also this oxygen, carboxyl oxygen, will reorient its its uh, its position and coordinates with the zinc. In this way, this carboxyl oxygen also gets some stabilization uh, from the presence of the zinc. Okay, so it is apparently looking like a one-three dicarbonyl compound. Okay, just keep it in mind. Now, what happens in terms of fifty percent aqueous? K2CO3. This is a basic aqueous solution. So what will happen? This N minus will abstract proton because we know that N minus is more stronger uh, base compared to oxygen minus. For example, NH2 minus and HO minus. If we compare, this is more stronger base. Okay. So it will abstract proton. Fine. So what will happen after abstraction of proton? It will produce. This will produce. R double bond NH and this is this still it is bind to zinc zinc bromide. Now the question is since this oxygen is binded to zinc and means a carbonyl means it's extra carbonyl precisely say bound to zinc then this nitrogen is also bound to zinc with right previously with the due to the negative charge and another it has a lone pair so right now it's bind to the lone pair. So after this binding results in the electron deficiency and this carbon and this carbon, consequently anodization becomes more facile. What do I say? This is secondly the medium is basic K2CO3. So this base can actually this K2CO3 base actually this K2CO3 in water produces. So it is a salt of weak acid and strong base. So it produces KOH plus H two CO three or we can say H CO three minus. Okay, so this H O minus can abstract this base can abstract this proton. Consequently, what will happen? This charge could be the negative charge will be generated. Negative charge and this negative charge could be stabilized by both in this way, in this way. And if we see logically, this this is a separated imine. Double C double bonded and it is a ester. Ester has a cross conjugation, so electron deficiency is more in this case of imine. That's why this bond will be formed here. Second point, so it will form here. Second point, after formation of this, the whole system is in conjugation from here 
this can he come here, this can come here, this. So in this way the final product is also stabilized. So it is like an alpha beta unsaturated amine. Okay. So this and another thing. So it's a vinylocus amide you can say. Fine. And second step we have added one molar ECL. So what will happen? ACL is a strong acid, actually one molar means it's the aqueous solution. Okay. So what will happen? First, according to logic, it will protonate. It will protonate. It will protonate first the nitrogen. NH3 plus. Second, this double bond is there. Secondly, as we know that due to this delocalization, this oxygen is also electron rich. So these will also be protonated. OH. So formula chart. So you can see lots of charge. So even it could be single also, but if this results in huge electron deficiency. Consequently, what will happen? The water molecule, which is actually not good living group, but due to this excessive electron deficiency, this will come and attack in this way. So it will result in water addition. Water addition means this NH3 plus, this is R. This is OH2. OH actually previously OH2, but it will release a proton to become a OH. And you can see this is OH, OET. Okay. So this is fine. So what will happen right now? Two step possible. If this this can push here and both, maybe OH may leave, ammonia may leave, but ammonia chances of leaving is more. It's a protonated. Okay, and if OH leaves, it will be a similar pro product. So that's why you should treat the reversible reaction. So this second, another log uh, logic is also possible. Instead of that, if it is not protonated also, keep it as it is. This can push and this can go. So in both way, what will be the ultimate product? So in the first way, it will produce again C double bond O O E T after removal of proton. So it will be this. And this, this R, and second case also, and this will instantly, this will, this will, this may tautomerize to give one three dicarbonyl compound. Okay, and if this step happens directly, it will result the carbonyl compound. Okay, so first it will produce carbonyl, and here also one this OH is there, so it will further tautomerize to prepare the final keto product. Understood? So mechanism is completely clear. In this way, one three dicarbonyl compound is produced, or we can say it is ethyl acetoacetate type derivative. Actually, ethyl means this is a ethyl group acetoacetate type if R equal to methyl. Okay. So one three dicarbonyl uh, reagents are very useful because they contain active methylene group. This one which could easily be deprotonated to generate a carbon ion which is resonance stabilized by this conjugation of these two and act as a nucleophile in various reactions, for example, the molecular condensation. Okay, this is the file. So let's discuss few examples. Okay, let's continue the discussion. So previously I have discussed about the mechanism of this Blaise reaction. So right now let's discuss about two examples. Let's discuss first example. This is utilized for the preparation of intermediate which is used in this carpetimycin A, it's an antibiotic. Okay, so what happens? This CN, this CN, it's a triple bond N. Here, this produces this zinc analog. So, this is negative charge. So, delta minus these attacks, and as previous, ultimately it produces. So, in the mid intermediate, intermediate stage, it produces. So, hydrolysis was not done such that this amine is removed and carbon is produced and second point the reason of this because this this is one double bond this is one double bond attached to a carbonyl group so consequently the whole system is conjugated that's why this amine form it is stable it didn't go in imine form okay so this is the re this is the strategy to prepare this uh, intermediate for this antibiotic preparation okay let's discuss about the second example you can see this is also a Conjugated cyano, so C some cross not mentioned here. So what happens similarly? This produces this zinc in presence of zinc, it produces this nucleophile delta minus, and this at nucleophile attacks this CN, and finally 
as we have discussed previously first it produces those evening those thing it gone and second step you have 10% hcl under room temperature condition so this evening is hydrolyzed and ultimately produces the carbonyl compound so it is 13 dicarbonyl compound and this is used for the preparation of in, uh, uh, this used as an intermediate in case of vitamin c preparation okay so this is the use of two reagent uh, this is the use of this methodology to prepare key intermediate for two different uh, important molecules so finally we have discussed today about blaise reaction and in the first this is a uh, analog of reformat key reaction where addition was the done with a nitrous nitrile cn group instead of carboxy uh, instead of carbonyl so this produces finally A one three dicarbonyl compound. So it's a strategic, efficient, strategic way to prepare one three dicarbonyl compound. Having one end is ester. Okay, and this this is active methylene. So this is the overall discussion today. So thanks for watching my video. If you like my teaching, please give a like and share this video among your friends. So that many people could be benefited from my effort. And please subscribe my channel, Chemistry and History of Molecules, and press the bell icon to get the notification of every single video I upload. So up to that. Stay happy stay blessed see you in my next video